Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Boz and today I have my son Walker with me. Hey guys. We are going to do some uh, education on the ketogenic diet and some very important topics to teenagers. So uh, Walker, why don't you tell people how, how excited you are about being on my channel? <laughs> <laughs> not the most exciting thing <laughs> how much I had to bribe you saying no I really need you to come on my channel and talk about this stuff so yeah welcome to raising teenagers right so why don't you tell people like uh, how old you are and um... I'm 15 I go I'm a sophomore in high school about to be done and it's April and there's still snow outside so you might guess we live in South Dakota yeah absolutely right so um, the reason I have you on the channel is that we are doing some uh, talks about how the ketogenic diet is used in the real world and there's no better tell in a family than to interview the kids <laughs> so um when did you first hear about the ketogenic diet uh i think it was when grandma was going through the whole deal and then you made us all go on it so it'd be easier for grandma to do it exactly we were grandma's support system if you haven't uh, checked out my book any way you can that's the book where I share the lessons that I taught my mom while she was dealing with her cancer but in our home there was plenty of uh, uh, learning going on about how do you live a ketogenic diet so that was over three years ago now and I think it was like eggs and cheese for like eight months straight and then I figured out something else. <laughs> yeah, because your mother's a great cook, right? <laughs> so if you look at some of the some of the other things though that um, when we would cl we cleaned up our house, especially when grandma was living with us, and then um, we've had chapters of being better at the ketogenic diet, then not so good, then better mm -hmm. at the ketogenic diet. Um, what do you think is the heart, you know, what does it mean for you now after you've learned all this? What's it mean to be on a ketogenic diet? What's that look like? Well, so I try really hard, like 95% of the time to just stick with it. And then I'm always watching it like throughout the day. Sometimes at school, it's super hard because there's no options. There's no other options, and so then I just have to make it better throughout the day. Right. So there's lots of temptations, and there's carbs everywhere in your world. Mm -hmm. So throughout the year, three year, three years now, you've uh, heard your mom chirping, Walker, you should be on a ketogenic diet. Walker, you should be on a ketogenic diet. <laughs> Why? Why do I want you on a ketogenic diet? What's the biggest reason is because I have tons of acne, and right. it's just kind of how my skin works, but then... At the end of the day, the only way to fix it is like addressing it through the root cause. You can find all the scrubs or anything you want, but it doesn't really fix it. And so then by being on a ketogenic diet, my body makes ketones and stops the inflammation on my skin. Yes, very good. Yeah, wow, that's advanced. So I will unpack what he just said <laughs> because we've gone through this chapter as mother and son that he uh, he looks great now. This is a good version of his acne, but he's had some struggles where his face is like when he said you can buy all the scrubs you want. I swear we've bought every one for him saying, I'll tell you, Walker, there's some very important reasons why your body is making ketones or is making acne. There's a very important reason why your body is making uh, acne. And it has nothing to do with scratching off your face and you know washing it that much more. I mean, you've done as much as you can with a scrub. So we're going to talk um, uh, about a ketogenic diet and why um, why acne is uh, what Walker just said. It is the root cause has much to do with inflammation, and that inflammatory response has a hyper drive uh, of re replicating skin cells. And it also has a stickiness that happens as you slough skin cells. They don't slough as well. Uh, that ends up clogging pores, and that leads to more inflammation. And all of that begins with one word. Insulin. Insulin. Very good. Oh, he's a star student. <laughs> you might be uh, pre-programmed for this. So I'm going to take a second to hop over to some slides and teach you a little bit about the background of... Um, when I'm looking for understanding somebody's insulin, what does it mean, and how do you do that in the real world? And then Walker and I are going to have a contest about whose who's number is better, so stay tuned. All right, so uh, I will have Walker step out of the screen there for just a second. We are going to go over here and talk about the Dr. Boz ratio. So the Dr. Boz ratio is a way um, of studying what's going on inside your body. Uh, specifically for your teenagers, you're looking at um, what's their insulin level. And if you look, their glucose is going to be very tightly regulated. Glucose divided by ketones gives you a Dr. Boz ratio. So when you look at most teenagers, and we're going to do blood sugars here in just a minute, you're going to see that their sugars are 
unbelievably well controlled. They are early in their life. They haven't hopefully been overweight for too long and their whole system will uh, respond to a course correction much faster than the adults that I see. Um, so if you look at the Dr. Boz ratio, we're going to take a closer look at what it means to have a glucose uh, and ketone um, ratio. As you look at this chart, the Dr. Boz ratio has some data points on here, and I've gone through these in other slides. But what I really like folks to look at is as the lower this Dr. Boz ratio gets, the lower their insulin gets. And that is a hidden part of what happens in a teenager's um, skin cells and, and in their growth just like it's a hidden chemical in my adult patients. So if you look at the Dr. Boz ratio, this insulin is, um, um, it's really important. So I know we demonize this on my channel and I'm happy to debate that with somebody because most of the time, like when Walker was having a really tough time with his acne, um, boy, his skin was so inflamed. There were hundreds of pimples. And uh, it was because every time we checked his blood sugar, it was pretty good. But if you checked his uh, Dr. Boz ratio, it was awful. He was up into the 200s. Uh, and that's because his body was over making insulin to keep that glucose controlled. That's a very primal uh, programmed part of the chemistry in our human body. So when we look at insulin, I like to use this as a teaching point. Here is Mr. Insulin. I drew him angry and inflamed because you look at excessive amounts of insulin in the human body and, um, you know, in Walker, it's his inflammation on his face, but you look at my uh, folks in their, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and they have inflammation in their joints. They have inflammation in their gut. They have inflammation in their brains. And it's because their insulin hasn't been high for a couple of years, like it would be in Walker's case. It was high for decades. So we have excessive amounts of insulin, we get buckets of it around, and that causes this chronic inflammation. So in uh, undoing that, we start by saying, what happens if we recruit ketones to be around the insulin? And the longer those ketones are around, the more the body works to remove that inflammation and really douse out the insulin. You'll see that our, our ending Mr. Insulin here is, is a little grumpy, but he doesn't have a flame around him. And that's what we want for our insulin ratio. Uh, when looking at um, the the long-term outcome for chronic illness, if we have the appropriate amounts of insulin, it's not inflamed. And that means that we need a Dr. Boz ratio that has a much lower number than what uh, most of my patients uh, have going in. So we are going to uh, measure Walker and I's uh, Dr. Boz ratio here, and then we're going to come back for a couple of final slides. So let's, uh, let's march over to the screen come on back on screen <clears throat> so we're gonna have a little contest here uh, we're gonna have Walker be brave and <laughs> uh, so how well, we're gonna check our numbers so I'm gonna use like this the normal thing but he's gonna actually use the pin so again we want to poke and get a little little blood drop right now yeah go so the first thing we're gonna check is our sugars and um, we have two little monitors here push the little button push hard <laughs> Is it scary pushing your finger? Here, you let me do it. <laughs> All right, you do this, and then there, there you go. Okay. So now you make sure that okay. I put one in yep, I already put one in there. Now you make sure that just siphons up that little tunnel in your in your monitor. Okay, so here it goes. We're both looking at our numbers. Hold it up there. Who's gonna win? So mine, mine is 111. Um, and, and his is totally better. So that's that's exactly, I had no idea how that was going to turn out, but that was my guess that he would have a better sugar. So pull that out and put that aside and now grab your ketone strip right here. Put your ketone this strip in. And the ketone strip is, um, again, be sure to not touch it up to the thing. Don't touch it, don't touch it, don't touch it. You want to wait till it says a number on it. Just wait. Okay. Mine says, okay. So then, all right. You no, know, you got to get it in, get it in, get it in. There you go. All right, so my ketone number is, it says high. Okay, hold on, let me try again. What's yours? 6.1. 6.1, oh. what? Oh, you just took a dose of ketones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. This is a great teachable moment. He's gonna totally kick my butt. Only because he just took exogenous ketones like, what, 10 minutes ago? <laughs> Man, I wish I was. I wish I was a teenager. Um, oh, that's really funny. <laughs> so, um, 
Uh, <laughs> that is fantastic, actually. If mine says hi, it's because I took a swig of that, too. Um, oh, mine's 5.5. 5. 5. 5. So this is totally not fair because <laughs> we totally cheated. <laughs> so do you remember your number? Take 93. So your Dr. Mouse ra ratio 93 is... 93 divided by 6.1. 93 divided by 6.1, which is totally insane, um, is 15. <laughs> okay. And um, clear. And mine was, what, 111. Uh, divided by 5.5, .5, and that's 20. Okay, so as much as that's that was, fair. that's not fair. So, um, yeah, what we did <laughs> was walk through saying, I don't know if I can do this recording. I'm kind of tired, Mom. I look I look sleepy. I'm like, oh, you look great. You look fine. You're going to be fine. Just come. Just do this with me. Like, don't check it out. <laughs> and uh, so we each took a swig. We mixed up a, a, little, a little ketone, and we had some. Mm -hmm. it, it helps a lot. I'm not going to lie. I fall off the bag one, bandwagon frequently. And we have a whole system set up for me to drink exogenous ketones all day. <laughs> okay, so that's exactly where I'm going at with this point, is that for the longest time, as much as as much as much I wanted Walker to be better about his ketogenic diet, and, you know, what, what other things do I hold over your head that uh, being on a ketogenic diet is good for? It's good for focus. It's good for attitude. It's like... Kind of like a miracle diet, as much as that sounds like I'm from California. But <laughs> so, if you look at a um, if a, if you look at having ketones in your circulation, um, what what have you, you know? What other places do you use exogenous ketones? So you use them for my acne, and then it helps me study. I don't know. It's it helps me stay focused at night. It's you either drink iced tea to get some caffeine going through you, or I prefer exogenous ketones most nights. Because then I'm not jittering the rest of the night, but I can focus on my homework. And, right. And your debate tournaments, do you use them at your debate Yeah, I use them a lot in my debate tournaments. Right, yeah. So we talk about this because when you look at um, the first few weeks, I mean, I'm saying, look at your acne, look at your acne, please do this, do this. But, you know, as much as that is a great idea, that mom, son, teenage thing is real. So I said, fine, just hack it. Just biohack your system and put the ketones in every couple of hours. I I'm not gonna. I'm gonna be honest. I did not believe her when she started saying that it was gonna fix all my acne. And so then, I just. One day it got really bad. It was like a lot of pimples, and he was like, "Mom, I really need this to be better. I've been washing my face. It's not got, getting better." And I just said. So, so then we just. She stopped trying to make me eat better, and she just handed me a bottle, like a water bottle, with a little metal protein mixer in it, so that I could shake it up throughout the day and drink it and like diffuse in the water bottle, then my acne got better in three days. And right. I was like, okay, that definitely works. <laughs> so what other things did you notice when you were using that? Because you put it in your locker and then in between uh, classes you said, okay, I keep sipping yeah. it all day long. What Every time I sub my locker, which is like four times a day, three or four times a day, I'll sit there and drink it. And then well, I do that just because since it's not as good as the fat bonded, my fat bonded ketones and it doesn't dissolve into my body as if my body was making it, it lasts for like two hours, and so then if I just drink it throughout the day, then I don't have that problem. Mm -hmm. and so, Did you have any other troubles when you started it? I don't know. People think it's like cocaine in my water bottle or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's not. <laughs> Go ahead and test him. But th that, the power is, is that it really is... Um, uh, when some people first start taking exogenous ketones, if their gut is unhealthy, Walker didn't have this problem, but if your gut is unhealthy, if they have leaky gut, they'll get diarrhea. And it's because you were asking me questions about what's in the label. So take a look at that and ask yeah, me those questions. The label doesn't say exogenous ketones on it, and I don't know how they get there. And it has like 80,000 acids. <laughs> no, it's gum. citric acid. It's got, uh, these are acid. acid. Beta hydroxybutyrate is what, what we look at for a ketone. That's the acid. And we have have to bind it with a salt. Uh, so it's bound with calcium, magnesium. I'm, I was really uh, adamant that my product had magnesium in it because everybody's low on magnesium. Uh, and uh, I think sodium was the other one. But no matter how many different ways you kind of bond that, it really does turn into, it doesn't taste very good. So we have to put a sugar substitute in it. And then there's another thing in there that stops it from clumping. And um, otherwise, it doesn't mix very well into water. But um, you mix it with water, but how do I take it? Or, you, uh, you know? No. Oh, you I put a little cream yeah. and a little ice in oh, it. Oh, I did not. Yeah, and it's really good. When you put, mix it with fat, it just absorbs a little easier, and I'm not 15, so this isn't as easy. Uh, so we're going to have just a couple more slides, and then we're going to kind of come back for one final thing to ask Walker. Uh, so let's go here and say... Um,
All right, so if you look at the Dr. Boz ratio and then you say, all right, um, here are the difference between the good, um, better, and best ketones. And when studying these, uh, what I first sh show folks is that you can have some that last for two to three hours. You have others that last for two to five hours, uh, even six hours actually. And then the best ones are increased ketone production for days to weeks. So Walker, which ones are the ones that last for two to three hours? Just, here I got the sheet here. They are exogenous ketones. Yeah. Yeah, those are the ones you just took. Yeah. That's why right before this video when we said, hey, what? let's let's do this video. You're going to check your, you're going to poke your finger, get, get ready. Um, and then 15 minutes later, it's like, oh my goodness, your ketones are off the charts. Awesome. <laughs> so yeah, they are in your system really quick within like 10 minutes. And, um, you know, I, I don't know if you feel if your energy is any better, but they're very measurable. You can measure them right away. If we would have checked his before this, uh, I'll tell you what. We'll, we'll tell him when he gets back on this camera what he had earlier today. Um, so the next ones that are medium, they last for anywhere from two, and you can see them uh, in blood in about an hour and a half, um, maybe even a half an hour if your system is really um, leaky, you will absorb it really even faster. As that's medium chain triglycerides. It's really important that you look at the label of your medium tri chain triglyceride, that it is carbon linked eight and 10. Uh, when you get to 12 units in your carbon link, your medium chain is no longer a medium chain, it's actually a long chain because medium chains can be absorbed uh, without digesting them. They are almost diffused through the portal vein, uh, hop over into your liver, and then your mitochondria turn those fats into ketones. And again, you can measure those in your blood. Um, the, the best ketones, though, come when you do fasting. And I'll tell you, I never get a fasting ketone as high as I just did. Um, I'm really proud when my ketones get up to like 1.8 or 2. Um, but um, one of the other things that I try to tell folks about is checking your numbers is really the most powerful part of this diet, that having ketones um, in your circulation is not something you can always tell. Like I, I would have never guessed that my ketones right now are five uh, based on exogenous ketones, but uh, I also sometimes can't tell when they're down to 0.8 after I've been keto adapted for a while. So again, the Foracare is one of the uh, one of the monitors that I really stand behind. Um, if I finally get my kids to poke their finger, the last thing I want is for the for the ketone meter to not work because I will get them to poke it again. Um, and again, uh, the product that I have mixed was. Uh, the beta hydroxybutyrate, uh, Dr. Boz BHB, and although there are lots of products out there, every time you buy one of these, it does support this channel and gives me some resources to keep making key, uh, videos and keep teaching folks about the ketogenic diet. So the last thing I wanted to go through was, this is what I call a slumpy brain. And if you've had teenagers where they're going through and their mood is irritable and they're, um, I like to use this, uh, this collection of words to say, look at their focus, look at their memory. Have they had a concussion? Do they have headaches? Are they sleeping badly? Uh, are they angry? Are they depressed? Are they anxious? Are they irritable? Now, some of the other ones are aging problems, but boy, if you want to describe a teenager, this list has lots of them on there that uh, folks do have troubles with. And when I say, you know what, don't try to get your teenager, you can hop back on screen, uh, don't try to get your teenager to do all that. I mean, their brain isn't working right. When sugars are going up and down, when they're not feeling good, and then you ask them to say no to things like uh, donuts or, you, or sweets, it's, 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 it's just unreasonable. They're just not healthy enough yet. But once their brain starts to be keto adapted, once their brain starts to take those ketones from the circulation and put it into their brain, uh, that's where I wanted Walker to come back and say, well, tell me what happened about, uh, yeah, three days in, you started to see your acne better. About a week, it was really noticeable how much better his acne was. Um, but what happened to your mood? Do you, do you recognize what dad and I? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I, you, I feel better, like, I, I don't know, I feel energized in school, and you could notice when I stop drinking it, I forget to fill it up one day or something, how to get out of the house fast, slept in, that I would notice three, two to three days later that it would, my acne would start coming back, and mm -hmm. so I noticed some, I felt a little bit better, but I didn't notice the things that Mom and dad did. Yes, yes. Mom and dad noticed the mood. We definitely had a less moody teenager. And honestly, um, it was not our idea for him to start using them at night when he was studying. But 
boy, he if he had to focus through and read something or do something you didn't want to do, you would see him in the kitchen mixing up a little keto and say, hey, guess what? I do a better job. I focus better when I use these. And I just think it's a testimony to say, when you're looking at how to transition energy and focus and anti-inflammatory effects of teenagers, acne is something that gets a lot of kids' attention. But parents, um, I would tell you, do you ever get a sports drink that's actually filled with sugar at, from me? No. No, no, no. Uh, I haven't had Gator in like four years. <laughs> All right. That does not enter our, uh, our house. And it's really because um, we have plenty of places that their carbohydrates are going high. They have plenty of access to sugar. It is the ketones that do decrease the inflammation. You know, acne was one of the one of the currencies that we used for Walker, but uh, looking at some of the other kids in his life, but in our family, uh, we use a ketogenic diet for mood regulation of teenagers, but also just to give them an advantage. You know, this is a time where in in today's world, your kid's performance at school will be a trajectory for how they deal with th their opportunities in life. And so giving them the advantage of a brain that doesn't have sugar going up and down, and more importantly, an insulin that goes up and down, which is fatiguing. That heavy brain is from excessive insulin. And their sugars are going to look good. You're going to poke their finger and they're going to be just fine. But at what cost? And that's the hidden number found in the Dr. Boz ratio. So I just want to say thank you for Walker coming onto the channel. He made major points with mom for getting this done. And uh, I'd love to see if you guys have kids that are on a ketogenic diet. So um, if you do, I'd love to read it in the show notes and comment back about where your kids are at and what um, how that relates to uh, your family. The final thing I wanted to ask Walker is uh, I wanted him to say a few things about what foods do you eat today on a ketogenic diet that you like. So on a ketogenic diet, we eat eggs pretty much every time I eat breakfast. I don't eat breakfast a lot. If I'm not hungry, I just won't eat breakfast. I'll wait till lunch because then it just makes me feel better. I don't have the crash. And mm -hmm. snacks at school, if they try to give me a snack most of the time, I don't take it. We just took the pre-ACT on Tuesday, and they tried giving me a granola bar, and I knew that wasn't going to go well with me. So I was just like, no, I didn't. Good job. took a water. But it's just like anything that's like super good at the beginning of the day and then Towards the end of the day, we eat a lot of meat, and that's when I tend to fall off, but I try really, really hard not to. <laughs> so, like pe pepperoni or? Yeah, pepperoni, meat sticks. Meat sticks, uh, cheese. Habanero cheese. Habanero really, cheese really, really, really is his good. favorite. Yep, Ron, habanero cheese is not going to be keto jay for long. He'll start doing something else. <laughs> but yeah, so then we also we have ribs at our house, we have brisket, we have you know, chicken. Uh, that's like the skin on rotisserie chicken. That's very Costco's fine. Yeah. Chicken. <laughs> we like that one. Yes, absolutely. So those are just some ideas of what we eat on a ketogenic diet. We're going to have more videos like this coming on how I use this in my family, but I thought Walker was the first best one. Thank you. <laughs> Talk to you later.